silence is golden because we can perceive that which is beyond hearing and truly start to listen. So the human experience as a continuum in relationship to our world around us and the natural environment and even the solar system and our relationships to the people around us and the dynamics of our engagements in the world are somehow all connected. And, and the question is, what are these archetypes that keep showing up in different ways around the world and how do we let ourselves expand into them with grace since we are already living embodiments of them and we are all here to be our best and all that is, is removing anything that's in the way from us seeing that that's already what we are. And so we have a, a psychological and physical set of qualities and states and emotions and the hierarchy of needs of Abraham Maslow as an example in connection to the organs and the nerves and those associated systems and glands and hormones and physiological states in the human being and the experience of that plus what can be measured biometrically or any other way. In addition to the anatomical and psychological experience of humankind, there's the connection to astrology and Pretty much every culture has an astrological set of archetypes, either for the constellations or for the planets or for the sun and the moon and the different cosmologies or mythologies around the meaning of that, whether they're external stories like creation stories or they are more mythological or psychological and explaining something about human nature and somehow that is connected to this archetypal framework that we're seeing these layers come together as, as a matrix of different aspects of reality overlaid on each other in a way where they all correlate through like these different dimensions, if you will. So we have, for example, in what you might call uh, Ayurvedic alchemy or uh, astropsychology or something like that, or medical Vedic astrology, you have the planets, the organs, the energy centers, or what is known in the East as chakras, or that's how it's been modernized, the endocrine nerves and their associated glands like the pineal gland, the pituitary gland. And then again, uh, archetypes, there's two layers to the word archetype in this sense, there's the archetypes of each individual, say, planetary uh, organ 
endocrine system correlation. And then there's also the overall meaning of the word archetype in the, and this is a map of overall archetypes that this is a meta level description of a number of different archetypal systems. And this, the goal of this is just to show that they are all directly correlated and have been mapped by many different cultures. And in many ways, all of these have already been mapped and correlated before now. They're just perhaps not commonly done in this way. So as we go on, we have the sun correlating to the heart, correlating to the pineal gland, correlating to the metal gold, and the day Sunday. The moon, the brain, the pituitary gland, silver, and Monday. Mercury, the lungs, the thyroid gland, mercury, the metal, and Wednesday. Venus, the kidneys, the thymus gland, near the heart, and then copper, and this is Friday. For Mars, it's the gallbladder, the pancreas, iron, and Tuesday. Jupiter, it's the liver, ovaries, testes, otherwise known as the gonads overall, tin, and Thursday. Next, Saturn, which is representing the spleen, the adrenals, lead, and Saturday. Okay, now if we correlate that overall to the energy centers in the body, if we start again at the root, we will be in Saturn. So at the base of the spine, this again correlates to um, the adrenals in addition to the uh, el elimination and the pelvic floor in general, the legs and the, and the lower body. This is Saturn, which is the furthest away from the sun. So in many ways, it is dense. It is structured, it has the rings, it has this sort of intense energy of density and coldness to it. And it has a profound power to manifest through uh, challenge and uh, hardship at times, and yet always showing the overall lesson that increases one's own understanding of oneself as uh, capable of growing through love always. And that essentially we have different elements of both the earth or the sky or the air, etc., the water, the fire, the light, the sound. And these correlate to the various energy centers in our body. And so as we move up the spine from the survival center of the base of the spine. We move into the second center, the first center being the earth, the connection to the earth. And as we move to the water center, we are connected to this energy of creativity Jupiter being very, what's known as benefic in astrology, and 
giving us flow, this current of energy in our life, and bringing the manifestation of vision and our ability to be grounded through connecting to our center and being embodied as a physical being while still not being rigid in that existence of being a material being and knowing that even on the physical level we are made of something like 98% water by atomic number. So as we find ourselves in the physical form, we recognize that we are still beings of flow, water is structured. So we're like massive liquid snowflakes. As we move to the third center, though, we find our fire, our digestion, our core. This is Mars, the red planet, archetypally known for being very competitive, the warrior energy. This is Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, the Indian Vedas. And this is our discipline and our will to live, to be able to eat, to be able to nourish oneself and sustain the eternal flame. So this is our, in many ways, sun, our solar plexus. It's a physical sun. So in some ways, these first three energy centers represent our connection to the earth, to the physical planes. And the heart is a second halfway point between the physical planes and the energy planes, or the higher planes. And so in the heart, we experience opening to oneself of acceptance and forgiveness and connecting to others, feeling open, free to share, to inspire each other, to give, to use one, one's hands to create, to be engaged both the mind and the heart in the world, so to speak. This is the quality of love. This is the center within us that we often don't think of as necessarily being a place of vision, and yet perhaps there's a intuition that we feel influenced the heart has a magnetic field that's 100 times larger than the magnetic field of the brain. So in many ways, this is a center point within the entire uh, archetypal axis, if you will. This is a great center of life force. So generally, we are representing the heart and the lungs here. 
Next, we have our thyroid, the mer mercurial experience. This is the experience of truth. This is the expression of honesty and being okay to express who we are, being happy expressing who we are. The power of the voice is the power of the word, of speech, of language. Language is being a fundamental archetype of the universe in a mathematical kind of way, where language carries a set of vibrations, and those vibrations carry resonance patterns that correlate to meaning. And as we clarify those, it's as if we're using these resonant vibrational patterns that we call words to influence the patterns of memory encoded light as we know as the proteins which encode DNA and that influences our epigenetic destiny so to speak and we can examine our life from these different levels to bring an awareness to our physical and psychological well-being for the organ systems of the body, for each of these psychological dimensions within ourselves of survival, of creativity, of discipline, of the heart, of relationships, of speaking our truth, and of as we move to our third eye, this, our brain, the prefrontal cortex and the uh, advanced mammalian human brain, the mind as a idea somehow being associated with the brain and yet we can see how the mind can be embedded and encoded within the entire body in this alchemical nervous system. And at the third eye, we see the sun. At the back of the brain, we have the medulla, which mirrors. And the medulla is the moon, which mirrors the sun. In yoga, there's a term for the basic yoga practice, which is Hatha yoga. And Hatha means sun and moon. And this is the balance of polarities from the dual to the non-dual, from the yin and yang to the yin-yang, the quantum experience of the wave and the particle and the recognition that these are both perhaps even just projections of an even greater reality and that greater reality being the final, the 
what's known as the crown chakra or the Atman, perhaps. Uh, the point that one reaches in enlightenment, known as the Godhead. And this is the thousand petal lotus. Uh, it's known as Samadhi or divine bliss, Satchitananda, ever new, ever present, infinite bliss, infinite consciousness. And so that's the <laughs> supreme wisdom in many ways from the East, but this is the mystery traditions expression overall from just about every continent has some different expression of this, but there's the layers of the planets, the organs, the endocrine system, the metals, the day of the week, the day of the week being practical just in that one can address each of those systems on that day and that allows one to be mindful of the whole set of archetypes throughout the week and partition accordingly since these systems correspond to each day of the week anyways and that's a simple way of looking at it that perhaps one doesn't have to go that deep and one can always just take it with a grain of salt and have fun and however way it sounds good. Let yourself relax into the process of integrating any of this information in a way that's practical and meaningful and valuable to you because it's very deep and it requires reflection on many levels and that we have a gift of life and that we understand the preciousness of that that we have this incredible system and and wisdom from our ancestors who have brought us incredible understanding and a level of togetherness that is un, un, unprecedented and we're humbled by that because it means that we can change the destiny of people who come after us or bring something valuable to the world that is one might say the final frontier understanding oneself understanding who am I who are we Are we here? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Got That's all, folks. <laughs> all right. Good night. Good night.